when you're lost in the darkness, look for the pod. Specifically, the Prestige TV podcast on the Ringer Podcast Network, where we're breaking down every new episode of HBO's The Last of Us. On Sunday nights, grab your battery and join Van Lathan and Charles Holmes for an instant reaction to the latest episode. Then head back to the QZ on Tuesdays for a deep dive with Joanna Robinson and Mallory Rubin. From character arcs to video game adaptation choices, story themes to needle drops, we'll parse every inch of this cordyceps coated universe. Watch out for mouth tendrils and follow along on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other, well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two-year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Julia Littman. Delighted to be joined by Callie Curry. Hello, Callie. Hello, hello. I missed you so much. I missed you too. We've got a lot to catch up on. I feel I feel like I have like 5,000 takes that wow. have not been wow, not we, been wow, placed, we, have not have been, been shared, fired off, voiced, voiced. Yeah. Well, we are going to cover some news about Love is Blind, some things that have transpired since Jacoby and I covered episodes Six, seven, eight. We are going to talk about Love Island because we got to finish that off. We left you all hanging. I know you're all dying to know what we think about this finale. <laughs> and also, we got to get Callie's final thoughts on The Bachelor. It's, you know, catch, catching up with friends. I'm delighted to do it. So much. Let's start with Love is Blind, the hottest topic. First of all, I feel like Love is Blind, This it's always popular. I feel like right now, it is literally the only thing that most people want to discuss. Like, I just feel like it's like the season has taken off. Don't you feel like that every season? I see people even tweeting being like, I always think that like the next season is going to suck. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's usually like reality, especially these type of shows, like you get to a point where like, it just can't be good anymore. Yeah, I know. We're not there yet. <laughs> no, we're definitely not. <laughs> also... I think I don't think it's a secret. I watch this this stuff in advance. And so I really enjoy seeing like what people find on the internet. And I've just been having a great time going down some Instagram rabbit holes. I would say the biggest difference between show persona and Instagram persona, it's gotta be Micah. Micah. Oh I my God. That. Micah is just an Instagram hoe. So many well, pictures of her butt. You texted me that. And <laughs> I disagree. I feel like really? that's what she was. Do you, that's what she gave me on the show. Also, like, her friends just, like, supported that. Like, meeting her friends, Shelby. I was just like, oh, yeah, this is definitely who she is. Which, I mean, there's been some stuff on Shelby Online as well. Oh, really? But, like, what? Yeah. So, this girl, like, a bunch of people, by the way, but there's this one specific... I'm saying girl because I don't know how old she is. She looked really young, so I don't know. But this girl had posted and was basically like... Micah's friends suck, specifically Shelby. And then that showed yeah. the scene and was just like, Quite she's obvious. so mean. And like, obviously Micah in the beginning gave us mean girl, right? Mm -hmm. She definitely, More on that. she definitely like, she progressed. Like she got better as yes. the season went on. I think she realized. Getting kind her of away from her arena helped a lot. Yeah, helped a lot. Yeah, her behavior curved upwards. But then meeting her friends, I'm like, wait, are you just a mean girl? Like that's kind of like what this girl on Instagram was saying. Shelby and her friends stitched it and just did like a reaction video to it. And they mm -hmm. deleted it like after a few hours because so many people were like tearing them apart. <laughs> and then someone 
Someone posted like a tweet that Shelby tweeted a long time ago, which, you know, we've talked about this. This specific tweet is weird, though. She said, if I was president, I would adopt an Asian baby to kick him around. What? That's just like. That's the tweet said. That's both racist, I have not weird, verified and this, cruel. But it had a lot of retweets and comments, so a lot of people have seen this. I don't know how true this is, but I was just like, Ugh. Shelby is a huge bitch. Like she, she well, she, was she drunk? I don't know. I I, I don't did, know. Did Micah, they not seem super drunk? Well, Micah. She can't hold her liquor. The second she gets drunk, it's very, <laughs> very obvious. Shelby probably was, but like I've never spoken to one of my friends that way about their significant other, like ever. That's like a really horrible way to to do it and like just be so unsupportive. Also, Micah seemed like genuinely so upset. Like she was like, what do you mean? That I feel like she took it really seriously. Well, okay, this is the thing. I agreed with Shelby not like what she was saying but I agreed with Shelby on the like I don't see it like Mm -hmm. I did not see it I never thought Micah liked him I thought Paul liked her but only so much like I never thought he was going to say yes but how she delivered it was pretty bad also (laughs) Micah at that point like Shelby's not seeing everything that we're seeing Right. No. So she's just going off. Of she only knows him one, time. one time. Yeah. And then listening to her friend. And I'm like, okay, so you met him one time. He was fine. Actually, you were rude as fuck to him. And then. Yeah. And he didn't even say anything. He just kind of like backed away. He just sort yeah. of was like, I'm not dealing with this, which is probably the best case. And that's in that scenario. Like he's not, he shouldn't like confront Shelby, especially if she's drunk. But also what is he supposed to say? Like, I'm not going to like sit here and plead my case to you for why I'm good for like, yeah. Here it was in this just, bar. <laughs> yeah, it was just so like I think he handled it the correct way. But I'm just like, so from my perspective at first, I was like, she's right. They don't match. Da, da, da. And then I was like, but she doesn't know that. Yeah. She <laughs> like, has like no information. And the way Micah tell. was acting, like what she was saying didn't match what I thought I was seeing. But she was saying, like, I really like him. I want you to be supportive. Like he's my forever person. Like I think he's my soulmate. Like it's it's hard to explain. Like she was saying all the things that if I were her friend, I'd be like, oh shit, I guess this is real. <laughs> I take it back. Uh, I guess I'll be seeing Paul for many, many years to come. (laughs) Shelby was not having it. Shelby sucks. I think my personal opinion is that Shelby is meaner than Irina. I feel like Irina is just... No way. (laughs) That, I can't, I can't get on board with that. I will say that Shelby reminded me of Irina. I agree. Yes, I agree. Also, I think a lot of people looked like Irina in the, in the season, like... Well, including Shelby. Yeah, including Shelby. Sort of like <laughs> similar face shape. Maybe it's like they do their makeup. I, I don't know. I think it was also like a chin situation. Mm, interesting. They had similar chins. So both Irina and Micah like have issued apologies on social, formal apologies on social media. Like the way when people are, you know, when they do something racist or they do something offensive, Micah and, and Irina both issued similar apologies, but it's like for being mean. And I texted this to you. I just don't think they should apologize for that. Like, they're just mean, and that's who they are. And it's like, fix it. I mean, but it's just like, you can't just like wash it away with, I'm sorry for, for those I've I've hurt with my behavior. It's like, well, it's not ignorance. It's just, you're mean. Yeah. Yeah, we texted about this. It's hard for me to understand an apology about your character. Right. <laughs> like, like <laughs> I'm sorry I'm such a bad person. I'm sorry that I'm a, a bitch. <laughs> yeah, like I I was yeah. the only thing I'll say for Micah is that I we saw a different side of Micah. Like she wasn't always a bitch. Mm-hmm. So maybe I can maybe I can take Micah's apology and her being like I had some bad moments and like after watching it I hated it. I want to do better. Like I'm so sorry for the way that I acted. Okay, I can hear that because I also saw you not be a bitch. Irina, I'm not sure. It's who you are. It's in yeah. your blood. Yeah. And I feel like they probably gave us the best cut of you. There's worse shit that you said that we didn't see. Absolutely. They probably said some really fucked up shit. And so we just saw them being like very sophomoric. Like the, their behavior in the pods together was was bad. But like it was not, you're right. Like it wasn't like cancelable offenses in my opinion. It was, it was I villainy. believe, I believe that Ira, Irina did and said worse shit that we didn't see. I think you're probably right. 
especially with Zach. Like, who knows some of the yeah. other shit she did with him? Like, <laughs> he was very much like when he called, he's like, I think we need to call it. He was just like, okay. He was definitive about it. Also, like, I'm sure she said shit to producers that usually that if there's nothing, if there's no drama, mm-hmm. they'll show that. Like, remember they showed, oh, never mind. That's Married at First Sight. <laughs> <laughs> well, similar show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, Same producers. Like, they'll show a cast member talking to producers if there is something that like will make it more dramatic. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like if there's not much there, there and they didn't show like any of that. So I'm like, she for sure was telling producers like, he's ugly. He's not my type. <laughs> da, da, da. Cause for some reason, Irina thinks she's Margot Robbie. <laughs> I think that's overcompensation. She talked about like her acne struggles. And I think that she like really, no. I think that's insane, Julia. I texted you this. I, for the life of me, can't understand how you had dialogue about how you were bullied and like were so insecure about your acne and, but you're a bitch. Hurt people hurt people. That's, I think that's Irina. (laughs) I, no. She's also definitely super threatened by other women. Like she's really threatened by other women being happy. She, what she and Shelby share, Irina and Shelby, is they don't want other people in their lives to be happy. They're just like, no, it's not it for you. Like, no, this is, this is not it. <laughs> They're like, stay with me. Well, Irina also like, doesn't, I don't know. She doesn't pick up on cues. <laughs> I think she just doesn't give a shit. Her conversation with Micah about Paul was insane. It was completely insane. Yeah. When she, yeah, she was like trying to see if there was a chance. Does he talk about like how she was how she was even talking to Micah about it was kind of like I mean what (laughs) Micah's like I'm engaged (laughs) I think because Irina's ended and she's like back in the real world she probably like doesn't take any of them seriously it wasn't it was insane I like how much this season they go to actual bars and there's like people around makes it feel a lot realer that reminds me, by the way. So they filmed this like exactly a year ago. And I know that because Zach's birthday was noted on Instagram this week. I thought it was longer ago, but it's, it's been a year. So anyone who's still together, it's been under wraps for a year, which is a really long time. I wonder like what the rules are. Well, it's not that hard because they only have to hide it for like two weeks. Yeah. No one knows who they are. That's until... true. But, but mild spoiler. Is it mild? I think so. I don't, I don't know if it's not fast forward. We'll put a timestamp in. We, there's a video surface of Jackie and Uh, Josh going to a Mariners game together. So uh, that's teased and they might, might be together. Who knows? That also reminds me, I mentioned this to Jacoby, but I feel like you'll appreciate it more. Marshall is cousins with Justin Glaze and great news. It is great news. Very handsome family. Very not, handsome family. Not attracted also, to Marshall whatsoever, but very handsome. Uh, Marshall's also not my type, but I think he's objectively like a good looking guy. I completely agree. Beautiful eyes. Beautiful eyes. Also, they create, seems like pretty good people. Yeah. I like Marshall. He's, he's he feels a lot. Another thing that came out on social media this week, Kwame was in an episode, kind of, of Married at First Sight. Did you watch that season? I didn't watch the whole clip, so I don't know what season he was on. Oh, okay. Well, oh, it's not- season 10, actually. It was from a while ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. How old is Kwame? He's 32. Kwame. He's 32. 32. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. He So the creators of Married at First Sight are the same as the creators of Love is Blind. So that explains how he was sort of like in the mix, I guess. Like they knew like the casting people for one show probably work on both and knew who he is. So that explains that. But like it does beg the question... Is Kwame like really unable to find love any other way or just looking to be on TV? <laughs> like what's yeah. going on here? That's a real, a real red flag. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of red flags here. <laughs> Among but, others. <laughs> but, and I heard you and Jacoby talking about this too. His career is a little bit of a mis- mystery to me as well. Yeah. So seeing him on Mary Fair Side, I'm like, do you want to be an actor? Do you want to be famous? Because like you weren't really a soccer player. Yeah, not really. And I don't know what your job is, but like in the pods, you made it seem like you were super successful. And then we see your apartment. I'm not <laughs> sure if it all max, matches up. That man loves Portland. He's just like really wants to stay there. I, I, You lived in Portland. Is it better than Seattle? 
Uh, well, I haven't lived in Seattle, but I like Seattle. I liked living in Portland. I would have really liked it if it wasn't in the corner of the U.S. Mm, very far. I hated that to get to Florida was a six and a half hour flight. And I'm like, if I'm getting a six and a half hour flight, I want to land somewhere where they don't speak English. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, that's. I actually. Spoiler alert! I just did that. I went from Newark to the Canary Islands, Tenerife, and six and a half hours. It's great. It's not as bad living in New York though, because there's so many places you can get to within an hour. Like if you're in Portland, you can go to Seattle and San Francisco. That's it. You're far <laughs> from every, everywhere else. Yeah, New York. It's true. Can you go to Hawaii? From from Portland. Portland? Yeah. Not in an hour. No. <laughs> I'm saying six and a half hours. Five yeah, hours. So, <laughs> no. Also, they speak English in Hawaii. But I don't think it's that big of a difference. I've heard that Seattle and Portland are like pretty similar. Yeah, I think they are. Seattle's great. So I, like I think Pacific Seattle Northwest. might be a little bit more important. But I mean, important. A little bit. Wow. Losing my mind. <laughs> I think Seattle might be a little bit more expensive. Yes, I, I think so as well. Because of all the tech people. I, 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 Wait, can I just say one more thing about Love is Blind before we move on? Yeah. Well, I don't even know if we're moving on. I was going to move on. Great, great but intuition. I was not supposed... To, I mean, like we weren't scheduled to talk about Love is Blind. And I texted you after watching the first five episodes. I think that's mm-hmm. what was released first. And I was just like going down a rabbit hole on Love is Blind. And then I also listened to your podcast with Jacoby because I was so into this season. <laughs> Thank you so um, much, Kelly. I thought it was just because you missed me. <laughs> that too. <laughs> And then I went to my bathroom where both my husband and I play music whenever we're in the bathroom. Like what a twist ev- the story has taken. <laughs> every time we go to the bathroom, we put on music. There's been a lot of Morgan Wallen lately. But I put on Eve. And what a missed opportunity. Love EVE? is Blind. EVE. She has a song Love called is Love is Blind. It takes How is that over not your the mind. Theme song? I, really, I used to love EVE. What's she up to? I'm not sure, but I also really loved Eve and was playing a bunch of her songs. And I feel like Seth was just like, what? Satisfaction's a great tune too. So good. Yeah. So good. But watching the show is what made me play it. And I'm just like, how is this not this huge missed opportunity? I agree. It's really not the the vibe though of Love is Blind. (laughs) It could be. (laughs) Maybe we wouldn't think that way. From season one, it was this track. Who's the guest singer on Love is Blind? I can't remember the feature. Love is Blind. It'll take over, it'll take your, over mind. your mind. I'm going to look it up on Spotify. What you think is love is truly not. You need to elevate and find. Like, what's Eve doing? She was a great. I'm going to tell her. Oh, it, oh, no. Maybe it's just her. It? Yeah, it's just her. Huh. I was thinking of the she song. She raps with, and sings, though. I was thinking of the song with her and Gwen Stefani. She really had a run. I mean, the Rough Riders were just dominant at the time. Yeah, she had a great run. There's a there's a solid playlist you can put together. Oh, definitely. She probably exists. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one line wireless plan from Visible for just twenty dollars per month for twenty four months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements. So many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. All right, let's move on. Love Island. I spent more time than I'd like to acknowledge watching some Love Islanders do interviews on YouTube in the last week. I've been hitting the Love Island subreddit hard. Oh, I don't Reddit Love Island, so I'm so interested to hear what they say. They hate Liv. Uh, the oh, world. yeah. <laughs> Everyone. I've seen interviews of Tanyelle and Zara, but do yeah. others hate her too? I haven't seen... By the way, usually after Love is... Love... Fuck, this is too much love. love usually Island. after Love Island, you see them hanging out a lot and you've seen it <clears throat> on TikTok. Liv is never there. Yeah, I think that Liv is hated. Also, now broken up with Mac- well, Maxwell, well, yeah, we obviously. Saw that First of all, we have to just say congratulations to Kai and Snum. Oh, yeah. They seem like Couldn't a lovely love couple. More. She's she seems great. The teacher, there's a teacher strike in the UK right now, and Kai has, as a teacher, has voiced his support. He really grew on me over the course of the oh season. Oh my gosh. I was not a fan, but she really brought out a good side of him and like he just became more real. You know what the turning point was for me? When he got into the fight with Liv and wouldn't apologize. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I was gonna say you're saying that Sanam brought out a good side of him, but honestly, Liv brought out a great side of him. <laughs> Great side of him for him being like, I'm not fucking apologizing. Yeah, she was like, what are you talking about? That scene alone shot him from like bottom five to top two. I think that contributed to his win, honestly. Like, (laughs) I really do. I feel like everyone did not want him to apologize and he was not going to. A vote for Kai is also a vote against Liv. And I just feel like a lot of people felt that way. <laughs> I I fully agree. He definitely grew on me. Sanam just seems like such a normal person. Like yeah. there's just nothing to dislike about her. She's also really cute. They did an interview after they won where both of them are like, we don't really want to be social media people. We mm-hmm. like both really like our jobs and like we want to keep teaching. And... They were like, now that we have this platform, like we might as well do it to try to like make some impact in our world. And I was just like, what? Like this is, these are not the people that go on Love, Love Island. I know. They're like so the people. I love also, them. I like how they bonded over both being Caribbean and like their Caribbean background and like talking mm-hmm. about that. I, I don't, I don't watch as, as well known. I haven't watched previous seasons, but I was like, this is just not something that we get on a lot of American reality television. So I was like, I was into that. And I don't know. They just seem like happy. Uh, The other thing is, is it common for there to be such a split in the house? Like for the two, for Ron and Lana and Kai and Sanam to be like a click and then the three musketeers. Although it seems like Will and Jesse are kind of like on their own island now. And by the way, I had to unfollow them on social media. Way too annoying. (laughs) No, usually it's not that big of a split. Mina Kimes from ESPN was texting me. She was pointing out to me what a snake Sammy is. And I think that's kind of true. That she was like, Sammy's kind of an instigator. And I kind of agree with that. I feel like I'm blinded by how hot Sammy is. So I'm just like pro Sammy. But I thought that was interesting. I'm also pro Sammy, but how is she a snake? Mina was texting me. I hope Mina doesn't mind that I'm talking about this. About (laughs) (laughs) about when... Sammy doesn't like Mina. With the Rosie fight, like with the Rosie stuff about how Sam and like how Sammy was kind of the one who like ran with Ron's a strategist. And I just thought that was interesting. And I kind of agree. I just just also with what Sammy. I I agree with what first of all, of course you would agree because you like Ron. I know. I know. I I say my my toxic trait is that I like Ron. (laughs) I don't agree because I agree with what Sammy was saying. I don't know. I just think he's like, he just talks too much, but they seem pretty happy too. Also, I thought was weird on the reunion. I really think, I believe Rosie. Like, I listened to the conversation. Ron, you were absolutely throwing Casey under the bus. I don't get why everyone's like, it wasn't that bad. That's not what he meant. Da, 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 da. I don't love Casey by the end of it. I didn't love him. And, like, he clearly was just, like, there to be there. Which, like, fine. Yeah. To meet Tom. To to find his soulmate. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But Ron was absolutely throwing Casey under the bus. And for some reason, no one wants to acknowledge that. 
We got to talk about the Love is Blind reunion. It was barely watchable. Love Island? Yeah, sorry. Love Island reunion. What did I say? The Love is Blind reunion is going to be live a, and it also has not. That, we haven't that seen will it be a yet. disaster. I guarantee it. Will, uh, will. Nick and Vanessa are not up to the task. So we will, I agree. We'll, we will respond to that, obviously. But I just, I can tell you it's going to be a disaster. Maya, great host. I thought she did a good job. Terrible Amazing. production decisions. Like, what the hell? They spent three minutes on like intros with a song and also like all the tables. Yeah, what is the, the whole- Golden Globes? All the tables of people. Like, yeah, I didn't like how they good. were all separated. We couldn't get the reactions of people because they weren't sitting right there. Like, there wasn't really like an open floor for them to go back and forth. Like, it just wasn't a good reunion setup. I agree with you. I think Maya did amazing. The only thing that gets a little tricky is Maya being prettier than all the contestants. <laughs> Why is that tricky? I'm just like, every time she walks in, I feel like everyone's like, can I recouple with Maya? <laughs> I mean, she's, I st- thought she is stunning. Every time she walked in, I was like, I, I want to recouple with Maya. <laughs> she really, yeah. She also, she has like a real gravity to her. She just is like a lot, she's a lot more like formidable than everyone else on the show. But she's like a model that we're rewatching season three because you're going to see the difference. In what? Well, because Caroline Caroline Flack. Yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. The reunion was terrible, though. I honestly, I'm not going to lie. I didn't watch the whole thing. I couldn't. Yeah, it was me neither. It was horrible. It was like, and, and it didn't even go into like the right drama. Like, they addressed the Martin stuff really early. And it's just like, I kind of like forgot that Martin existed. I don't know. I was ready to move on from that. I know he insulted Tanya on a podcast, but like, I don't know. Is also, that really? Like, Tanya didn't really like get enough heat. Like no. it was just, yeah, the whole thing. Terrible. Because, because, because Martin insulted Tanya. Instead, it was all about like, boo, Martin and not like Tanya. You kind of did some fucked up shit. Yeah. It was just like, didn't go after Liv hard enough at all. No. I hate... I, I would happily never see Liv again. Ever. I can't believe that it was never addressed, her movie night clip, ever. Well, all of the girls say... This has come out in, like, interviews and stuff. All of the girls say that she had told them what she said. So, like, it wasn't a surprise to them. But still, I don't know why they all didn't just, like, hate her based on that. It's just... She still said it. I know. She still sucks. <laughs> I know. I, I don't get it. That's like me being like, hey, just so you know, I called you fat. So if it comes out, <laughs> you can't get mad because I told you. It's like, <laughs> no, you still called me fat. I, I she, she sucks. Oh, man. All right. Let's talk about Zach and Katie. Did you watch the finale of The Bachelor? I did watch the finale. It was old. I, I, I was really, texting someone during it. Really it old news. Up. Wow. Cheating on me. <laughs> How did you feel about Gabby's um, performance talking to Zach? When, I thought ta- Gabby did great. Talking at him. He did not really respond. Jesse was no, like, sorry, he- Zach, no time. <laughs> but also, like, and there's not much for you to say. I think Gabby did a great job. I saw... Oof, I can't remember if I saw this on TikTok or on the finale. But I think I saw it in an interview for some reason. But maybe from your fave, Nick Vial. Mm. But she said the reason why she didn't leave, even though she knew for sure it was Katie. Like, she was like, I knew in my gut it was Katie. I didn't want to leave. And then Katie feel like she just got picked because there was no one else left. That's really sweet. What a nice and person. It really made me like her. And I really believe her. Yeah, I do too. They like Because those, she kept saying, really like, like I, know, I know it's not me. I know it's not me. And I'm sure they edited out some of it because they couldn't make it, like, horrible on yeah. the finale. But like she said over and over again, like I knew for sure it wasn't me. So yeah. she, like, I really do think she knew and was just like, I'm not going to leave because then Katie feels. And it seems like her and Katie still have a really good friendship. Yeah. Which I don't understand, but it happens a lot. Uh, um, actually, also Katie and Mercedes are like BFF. Katie's way less of like school mom than I realized. Like she's like. Yeah, her, which is concerning. Although. Zach. Yeah, I mean, maybe she's sort of, like, undergoing a glow up, but, like, she looks a lot better on her social media. Not that she looked no, bad, but it's, like, her her style no. and her makeup is, like, more current. I texted you mm-hmm. a video of Katie dancing. Yes, you did. And she's on beat. <laughs> and that 
really makes me feel like her and Zach aren't going to work out. That is literally the lowest bar you could have. <laughs> like <laughs> she has rhythm, so he cannot stay with her, which like I, I don't disagree with, but it just shows you what we're working with here with this loser. I just that video. I was like, oh, God, <laughs> like she's way more fun. And like. I feel like in like a 90 year old woman saying this, but like more hip. That's something I would say. So it's something a 37 year old woman would say. Here's the fundamental problem with The Bachelor. We've talked a lot about like the issues, but the fundamental problem is the (laughs) men who go on are just like, aside from some, some who seem great. Like I'm speaking, I'm thinking of Nate with a Y, Michelle's Nate. Like he's a, he's a real catch, but most of these guys suck. Like, Like, to be The Bachelor, you have to, like, be fundamentally, like, something's not working for you, so you have to do it. And I don't mean to say, like, the the women from The Bachelorette, like, it's, like, there's, they're, I just don't, I, let me say that again. I don't mean to, like, shade anyone except for the men of The Bachelor, but, like, to to be, (laughs) to be The Bachelor now, there has to be, like, something wrong with you, I think, because most of them have sucked. Yeah, I do think it's interesting because, like, the women, I don't feel that way. Me neither. They seem cool. And, like, these women, they all seem like they like each other and they seem fun. But the even, like, for the most like, part, blow. you can be the bachelorette and be totally normal. Yeah, definitely. That I doesn't like mean everyone. Uh, that, yeah, I was going to say, that doesn't mean every bachelorette is great. But you can be. It's really hard to be the bachelor and also be great. I also think it's interesting that the people that we know, not, like, you know, personally that well, but like, no. And like Mm -hmm. most of them say they would never do it. Right. Like Nate, like I I can't see Nate being the bachelor, but I would happily date Nate. So I would happily watch him as a bachelor. I'd be so happy to see him as a bachelor, but we're just not going to get it. So definitely not. Yeah. But like a lot of them, I don't know. It's, it's just a real problem, but so happy. Callie, we did it. We survived. We made it past Zach. Can only get better from here. Can only get better from here. Yeah, it was fun. You know, it's it was good. All right. We will be back on Monday morning talking about Love is Blind 9 to 11. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to our producer, Jade Whaley. Thank you to our other producer, Ashley Smith. Callie, great to have you back. I made everyone think that like you had fallen off the face of the earth. So Oh, I got some concerned (laughs) DMs. I was like, what did she say? And then finally someone was like, what does she mean by out of pocket? I was like, oh, that's what she said. Well, but I'm back. It was you're quick, back. I fell out of the pocket. I'm back in. <laughs> like a great quarterback. All right. We'll be back on Monday.